Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Faded Truth. Before you do anything, like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned. And this show is sponsored by Cannabis Talk. Every Monday through Thursday, you can catch yours truly, Angie Ma, and my partner, DJ Memphis Hollywood, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central. Download the Mixler app and search Mainstream Radio. And today I have Mr. Ryan Rappaport on the show, the co-founder and managing partner of Digital Venture Partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a little bit about Digital Venture Partners. Basically, you collab with celebrities and influencers on cannabis brand development, and you're also trying to cross the biggest racial barriers in the cannabis Mm -hmm. industry. Is that correct? Did I I do it right? Yeah, you're killing it. (laughs) Yeah, off to a good start. Good podcast. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. You spent seven years as a leader in software brand development. So that, I mean, I don't even know what that means. Like, Well, it's more business development, actually. So it's like sales. So like I've always kind of viewed my work as like network. So like it never really felt like I'm trying to sell people. And it did at some point. And then I was working, doing things that weren't, wasn't necessarily like super feeling like in different types of software, even though it was stuff that I thought I was passionate about. I was really just chasing money. Right. And then worked my way into cannabis. That was about five years ago. What's the first step, though, that you took from going in the software brand to cannabis? Mm. So it's funny you say that. The seed was planted in 2014. Um, uh, I had worked at a HR platform and then met um, a, a guy there. Uh, I was his business development per- person. His name was Keegan Peterson. And then um, he, he was like a national account executive. I quickly like set some meetings for him and some other people, got promoted. So he saw what was happening in the weed industry because he was living out living out there and he reached out to me like I think like eight months after that and I was working on something else and had a full-time job and he was like hey I'm starting a payroll company for weed and I was like shit I'm like that's a, that's a thing <laughs> like and like you almost forget that weed is legal out there for the most part right, right? so um when he told me that I was like oh okay that's this is a thing I've been a lifelong cannabis user I grew up in like a very destigmatized family for it nice so when I started realizing oh this could be I'm passionate about this I've always been passionate about it I've always enjoyed it but as I started learning more about it I was like oh I could do this full time now that my friend Keegan just recently passed away and so yeah and so it's just like it's funny how things kind of come full circle right Right. in that he was the reason I got out here I'm where I'm at like he really helped me early on in the industry as well and so the really cool thing about what I do is like I get I've been able to create a network of people that have been great people doing cool things and that's what led me to what I'm up to now. Okay, so with Digital Venture Partners, you have the your two partners, which are uh, Sunny, mm-hmm. right, and Andrew. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay, so how did you... Oh, I'm sorry, we have a new partner. Um, her name's Shirali Patel. She's uh, a, a really awesome, like, hot shot from, uh, from New, new Jersey. She's yes, I'm campus. Jersey. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's so awesome. And we just brought her on in a, in a, as, a as a team member and nice. uh, part of the managing partner okay. as well because she's doing some really cool stuff in corporate law and like federal litigation and IP wow. work. Yeah, and so, and then we also brought on another attorney, his name's Christy Giovanni, um, really cool sports uh, agent, uh, the sports and uh, entertainment law as well. So how did you meet Andrew and Sonny? I met Andrew on LinkedIn, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, funny enough. And so uh, he brought Sonny to me, Sonny wanted to get his own brand going. Um, we ha- I had some ideas for them. We launched not we launched in Height Ashbury, uh, Puff Puff Pass, and right out in front of there with those guys in your uh, cookies. That went pretty well. You know, it wasn't like a massive success, but our whole thing was like, we were able to do this, you know? He had this Roland Grams brand, so his tag for a while was, Sonny, Roland Grams of Wax. He was kind of known, so Grams of Wax is like referring to rolling up weed. He, he came up really young and he's done music with everyone. So, I mean, he had a great brand. People who know him know that he smokes a lot of weed. And so, you know, it just kind of, it took a little while to develop as we were like getting, actually we really launched in, in less than 60 days. But when did Digital Venture Partners come to fruition? Uh, well, I mean, we started about two years ago. Okay. Met Andrew about two and a half years ago, but the first product dropped uh, September of 2019. Nice. And then, so we did two runs through that. Um, then we planned on these events happening in February. Sunny had just gotten off probation for weed, unfortunately. We had this badass party to celebrate him getting off. That was February, it was the end of February. And uh, it was a pound party and there was a lot of weed and a lot of cool people came through. Nice like, way to come off probation. I know, right? And it, he, and it was, I mean, like it was people were participating, right? The pounds were for everyone. And we had some really cool people come through. We're gonna keep doing that. And then pandemic. So that obviously got put on hold. Gotcha. And then, yeah, so that's what kind of led us up to now. And then the whole content thing started 
uh, really the end of May, and that's where what led to all this crazy stuff that's happening to us right now. Okay, so I know you guys are addressing the issues of racial bias mm. in the cannabis industry. Mm -hmm. It is Black History Month. I didn't even realize that it was like that in the cannabis industry either until I watched the Grass is Greener documentary. I didn't, I didn't know that jazz started the weed and then once white people had it, now it's acceptable, you know? So what are you doing as a, you know, addressing these social equality issues in cannabis? Mm. I think it's tell authentic stories, right? Because we, the, the one thing out there is these stories were muted for so long because of the prohibition we've had. And I've learned so much. I mean, when I got into the cannabis industry, I saw all these large international companies being sprung up you know, and everyone's like, oh, the money here, the money here. And you're like listening, like, this sounds awesome. And then all of a sudden, these companies didn't actually really do anything of real worth and value. And they, a lot of companies got insolvent real quick. And they're still doing okay, right? But then you got to remember, there was this whole culture of people that were locked up. And it wasn't, I mean, it, it was multiracial, but people of color were a large, large, large portion of more of the people that mm -hmm. were being locked up. And then it, when for you go cannabis back and, or yeah. just in general? Oh, for cannabis. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, and you know. Because in general, I think it's like 50%, I think, of yeah, the population it's like a, yeah, is correct. black yes, in correct. jail. Correct. Yep. And th that's crazy. And maybe more. And they make up a certain percentage of the pop of the actual yeah it's yeah you know? exactly it's yeah and the, so the number it's like <laughs> I, I'm, I don't want to I don't want to misquote I want to say it's like eight to one or five to one in the difference of like how many people are yeah. that are black for the same crimes but the crime so the crimes people are being held for in, in prison as well um, is it goes all into the whole racial thing about how you're gonna lock somebody up for a blunt you know what I mean people are put on probation for blunts or mm -hmm. fucking you know what I mean mm -hmm. those small amount of weed um, and they're they're in there for 13 fucking 13 14 years yeah. for for a gram and, and it's proven you said you said systematic cuz it is it is systematic it was something that was put into place to have a particular system to screw people over and to to mute people right so i i'll just say like over the the last 5 years cuz i i grew up growing it in the forest right like i i've had a long history with the plant but now that i know the stories and the more stories i've learned you know i it's the authenticity when you talk to people who spent time in jail you know, or, you know, had family members, you know, or lost people to opioids or, you know, weren't were denied the medicine that they needed. And so, like, as I learned these stories, it, it like it, that's what started driving me. Right. And so part of my mission is just like helping people. And I like to be of help. You know, I like to be in service. So when I started going out and and like hearing these stories, I'm like, what can I do? What can I do? And then when I connected with Andrew, the dude's a, a creative genius. Like, I, I want to say, like, he ideates a large majority of the stuff we do. And like I'd say most of it, if not all of it, and like, he, but Shout like, out he, Andrew. yeah, he's a man. Like, and, and like, I, he's like my brother now. And like the things that he does, the way he like puts together concepts and like strings it together, and then we find all the people we pulled in, and we start doing some stuff. And, and a shout out to Play Pendergrass, who's been with us from the beginning and helping us do everything we're at now. We started basically like, okay, what can we do? And we were able to team up with Black Enterprise Magazine. From there from black enterprise we were able to uh spring a show where we had john how Sen did you get to black enterprise uh we connected with them through social media your guys what you're doing is like the top watched thing on black enterprise it is and yeah, they, it's they, they were kind of worried about it because it was older people and they didn't know how they were going to take the cannabis you know and they and they fucking love it mm -hmm. so that's awesome mm -hmm. yeah well so that's what led us to this conference we're doing so what's the partner thing with weed maps so weed maps um you know we're a minority owned company we're majority minority owned company and so as that, they one are backing us in terms of like, hey, we want to get behind young entrepreneurs who are doing cool stuff. Um, on top of that, they have a real strong social uh, equity initiative called Teal. As they're rolling this out and deploying money out there, they really want to have those stories. And I think where Weed Maps, what, what really interested me about Weed Maps is it's turned very political for them. They recognize that their company as a success is built on politics going in the right way. And so we've been able to tap in with these amazing political networks as what we're doing. We've had Chuck Schumer on our show. You we, win. Uh, Digital Venture Partners, you win. I'm not going to lie. These <laughs> last couple months have been insane. And like, yeah, we, we might very quickly become one of the top, um, if not black owned, uh, black cannabis platforms, you know, maybe all of them. Wow. <laughs> That's what we're working on. So as a white man hmm. going into a black owned industry, how did the partnership go? I mean, obviously you guys are partners now, but hmm. Even just anybody in the industry accepting you into that space, mm. how was that for you? You know, it's funny because I, I have even have to say that, saying that I work at a majority minority owned company and I'm like, a, you know, a, a piece of the pie and I'm white guy. 
And I, I question that sometimes. And I even say that, like, I, in, in the beginning, I wanted to be authentic. That's what I, all oh, the whole entire time is like, what can I do to communicate clearly and like how I feel and, you know, how I act. And so when I even like would ask friends just to be like, hey, yo, how is this perceived? Just because even I want to, I, I do try to listen to like outside my own head. And I can be like, bro, you're just authentic, man. Like, it doesn't matter like what color you are as long as you're, you know, you really care. I've been a fan of music my whole entire life. So to be able to work with people like that, meeting cool people, funny people, you know, I'm just like, I feel blessed. Like the people I get to meet. You're just a down white boy. You yeah, the down white much. boy. Yeah, I am. Yeah, hey, <laughs> hey, I can be that. I'll be the token. Yeah, I'm happy to be. And my friends always tell me that because, you know, I'm mixed, but I'm, I'm light. Mm -hmm. So they, they're always like, we need you because mm -hmm. you're going to open doors for us mm -hmm. that we cannot open for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And everyone needs a partner with the white man. That's mm -hmm. literally what she said. And I'm mm -hmm. like, damn, you know, at first I was like, is it really like that? You know, that's like mm -hmm. racial, racial. And she's like, no, for real. Like mm -hmm. you can, you can put, you can say like, I have her back and I want to put my money behind her and this company is going to put the money. But as a dark skinned female, they're not going to fucking put their money behind me. You know what I mean? You're and right. It's crazy. You're, you're and it's, you know, and that's, it's an issue in the cannabis industry too. You can go through some board decks and like see the websites and see who really owns things. Right. Right. And then like go and see, you know, on the, on the, even on the social equity side, there's a lot of drama around that because people are, People are being backed by companies who don't have their best interests right. in mind. Right, and they have no the minorities working for them. Exactly. There totally has been a decided, decided shift in that. Connecting the dots is what we I think we've done best because we're we're partners. Like our name, the digital thing falls. We're a portfolio of brands and ideas as ventures, and then we we form equitable partnerships with the community with across the logistics, cultivators, social equity, retailers. You know, we really try to uh, focus in on businesses that are doing good things and then linking all of the people together, whether it's, you know, music artists or a multi-state operator. I mean, it just sounds amazing. Like, it sounds like the best job ever. Like, I'm I'm working with weed. I'm actually making people fucking get together and mm. love each other. I'm, like, having a great time. Like, mm. you know, it's just, it's, isn't it great doing what you love? Like, your passion? Like a Anyone who's known me for a long time, um, will know that I've been these last five years have been some of the best of my life and then for the last two since I started doing my own thing and going like full in uh, since the last two I'm the happiest I've ever been yeah and like it was coming from place of like mental health having like real like conversations with yourself knowing mm -hmm. like trusting your gut like we have a lot of cool things we're working on and we're just I'm just blessed I mean like the amount of opportunity that's fallen I don't want to say fall into her laps, but it's feeling very destined in very weird ways. And I can't go into all of it. Are but... you guys going to do some events in Vegas? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got okay. something really cool coming here. Nice. Potentially on a day that's very famous for Yay. weed smokers. So I'm not, I, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I, I, will not con I will not confirm or deny. In your city where you live, hmm. um, I know you're kind of traveling and stuff, but are you involved with voting? Um, do you vote? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah, because I don't vote, mm. and um, my friend also brought to me that this was an issue and it's attention to me because I said, you know what? I said your vote doesn't matter. We're all fucked, right? Mm. And she said, you know what? The the global vote might not not matter, but mm. in your city, you can do something to change your city. So mm. if you feel like something's wrong, you can discover your officials. You can figure out, you know, what you need to do to get them in or out, or you can try and talk to them about your problems because it's your city. Um, have you ever been that involved? Oh yeah. Um, I learned early on when I was hearing like the, the people who were stepping into it, that politics, it was political, it was political, it was political. You had to know all the process. You had to have the money, you had to have the connections and very on early, very quickly. It was like that. Um, even though it all started off as caregiving, the money came into the, into the equation, right? So as I learned about that and I was able to hook into the national cannabis industry association, and I, I had known about normal from a long time and some other cannabis centered organizations, I knew like, oh, I'm like, the way you escalate is by knowing what's happening in politics. And as you come to learn politics, you're like, this is fucked. This is so fucked. <laughs> so you already oh know my like God, it's fucked. it's fucked. Oh no, it's so fucked. And I still oh God, vote. I have to learn it. I, I already voted. know it's fucked. <laughs> I, I know people very close to me who did not vote and were like, and one girl did not vote for the president. And like, you know what? I can't blame them. You know, people want to get mad at people like that, but you know, shit's fucked. You know, shit was fucked. You said it, right? And so I still believe that you can change opinion. Um, it's funny because so I, I've lobbied at the state or city, state and national level for the National Cannabis Industry Association. I was going and trying to have conversations with senators. I accidentally 
the first one I accidentally walked into the Alabama state senator's office. I mixed it up. I because when you walk in there, they have those old letter boards where you pick the person's office. And I went to the wrong office and I walked into the state senator's office. I'm, I'm with the National Cannabis Industry Association and I want to talk to you about the Moore Act. And, and the people looked at me, they looked at each other and they looked at me. They're like, take this card. And I'm, like, and I'm like, and I walk out of there and I look and I see the sign of Alabama. I'm like, oh, my God. So how did you get in touch with the National Cannabis Industry Association? So I worked at a company called Vanks. That was like my first paid job in cannabis or like one of the top uh, recruiting platforms in the industry and uh, I got really connected when I was there and they were a member of the industry and I got to kind of experience the the events and I got to go to the events and I was like oh there are cool people here there are cool people working in this industry and I, I gotta say more so than anything I've ever done in my life I've met the, some great people they've become like dear friends business partners and like so I'm, I think the community in itself is beautiful and so I've been really lucky to meet these people and like yeah. c grow with them like people who are like my G's and I hope they're coming with me like as I have this crazy journey that goes on you know so what do you think makes you the person that people want to build with mm. and how do they feel safe with you other than obviously being white how do you think that you've gotten this far with all these connections in your own opinion empathy I think is like the number one thing that I've identified and lead into. I'm a, I'm, I've always been kind of like a very gut driven person and it's also led me to make many mistakes, but uh, it's something I try to balance, you know, through like a trusted network of friends and family through like when I know I have to take action. But like the number one thing is that I can, f I feel people like I, I'm pretty good at sensing people. It's like led me to be good at sales. Like I know, Sometimes when I'm overstepping, I can catch looks from people and I'm like, they don't give a fuck about what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can and I'm just people. like, oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. And right. like, and so, um, but that, uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Gary V and I never realized that empathy was like a power, you know? And like, and so I always looked at empathy as like, oh, I, it's like something I can use to my advantage. But then it was like, oh, it's something I can use to help people and actually advance. Like I wasn't looking at it the right way. Right. And I just it, feel like I never really had empathy and now I'm, I'm gaining it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to like learn about people's experiences mm -hmm. so I can help them mm -hmm. or help other people in the future. And you know what I found? And this is where I get selfish with this whole thing is that the more I help people, the more things come back to me. In and a good like, way. In a good way. In a very, right. very good way. And before I would hold grudges, like I was like a kind of like a. I would hold animosity, but I would like keep it down inside me and then right. like it would manifest in weird ways. So when Damn. I, when that's I, that's so crazy though. Somebody else said that to me before. They mm -hmm. said the key to success is helping people. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. They said, that's mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean? I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm worried about myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck. And now every, you know, it's just crazy how you keep hearing it because certain things you're going to pick out from people that are successful and you're going to start doing those things. Mm -hmm. So when those opportunities come up, now you can help them. I have a theory around that. And um, it's like the pay it forward theory, right? So like even no matter where we are in our lives, there is someone somehow that even if it was a negative experience impacted your life and got you to where you are now. And so if you can go and take the good things and that been given to you, not everything's been good. And I know people pass on bad things as well. Mm -hmm. But if you can take the good and like move that forward, then th the stuff will other good stuff will come with it. And like, it's I like had good karma, good but, karma. Really, but really you're making your own karma. You're making your own karma. Well, right. We're all living in the matrix anyway, so you can do whatever the hell you want. But if you want to go on a side note, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't have no space, but <laughs> I'm pretty flexible. <laughs> what uh, give backs are you giving to the community? Do you mm. think? We we're starving entrepreneurs. Like I'm not going to lie. I haven't had a lot of money coming in until very recently. And even then, it still hasn't really hit my bank account. So until I love it's the like, honesty. Thank no, you so much. No, because I mean, entrepreneurs <laughs> doesn't mean that you're fucking rich. It means you're no. an entrepreneur. It means you're working I, for yourself. Andrew said it on the interview. He mm -hmm. said, "I'd rather make fifty thousand a year working for myself than make five hundred thousand working and building somebody else's dream." Don't ever fucking build somebody else's dream. Build your own. Like you'll be the happiest motherfucker ever. I thought that I needed like fucking all this money to be happy, and really, I just need. To have a great day and fucking do what the fuck I want to do and and put my energy into the right places. That's what makes me happy. Preach. No, I, that was the biggest inflection point in my life because I'd always chase the money and like chasing the money w wasn't making me happy. And I didn't know that until I was like, fuck money. I literally was like, fuck money. I'm like, I don't care. I'm not going to work for money. I'm going to work for what makes me happy. And if that what's, makes me money, then great. And then I've actually changed that view. Shout out to my girlfriend, Laura. She's awesome. And like. 
changed my like kind of viewpoint on how I look at money and to the point where money is a vehicle for helping people now. And since I've transformed that, I know that there's a lot of money in my near future. And it's in like, in like this. <laughs> Do you feel it? Do you get this feeling of like amazing success coming your way? Do you ever get that feeling? I've seen it. I know that sounds weird, but like I, 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 I really try to manifest things and I, right. I, I'm picturing them happening real time. Some, right. Sometimes I can't even keep up with it. And that's the hardest thing is putting the belief behind it, because mm -hmm. if you talk about it, it doesn't matter. But you have to believe that it's going to happen. And that's my struggle. Mm -hmm. It's like me believing that I deserve 10 times more than what mm -hmm. I have. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's hard. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm working on a, on a daily basis. It's really cool. It's really cool to just see like your success coming. And you know it's coming, and 2021 is gonna be a motherfucking year. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. tell you for mm -hmm. everybody. You, me, I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, you gotta you... surround yourself with people mm -hmm. that you wanna be like. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Andrew again, because I, you know, like I said, like I just landed an amazing partner. We have our own lanes, like we know certain things, and we go and we execute on it. And when we don't, we find the right people. You know, part of bringing on Shirali, part of bringing on Chris, we have, we also work with Dave Burnath, who's a former Viacom exec. He ran Comedy Central for well over a decade. And, uh, you know, having people like that where we've, Andrew and I, when we were talking about this two years ago, we've literally had so many people been like, that's a bad idea, or I don't get it, or like, you should do this differently. And shout out to Andrew, man. He ideated this kind of from the beginning because he knew music and he knew that music artists are getting fucked. And when I had been seeing horrible execution on celebrity brands and someone who likes to smoke good weed. Shout out to the good weed. Yeah, shout out to the plugs. <laughs> Where do you see technology having an impact on the industry? Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you reading my damn mind? <laughs> oh, my God. That is bizarre. <laughs> You're freaking me out, Andrew Ma. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what's going on right now, but uh, who gave me these questions? <laughs> I've had several very interesting conversations about that over the last couple of days. And so here's how I feel about software as a service and technology in general. I think a lot of it's bullshit. I think there's a lot of value that comes from it. I also think it's crack. I also think it enables us. There's a lot of good and bad that comes with technology. And I was really happy to do what I'm doing now because I was kind of like, I'm not, I don't have to say that I work in technology anymore. I work with like people, I work with music, I work with events, you know? And so I was like, I was a decided shift for me and like how I, I identified with myself. A past connection, not, not going into too many details, past connection pops up. And it's like, I have this thing that you really, not, not even said that. I actually, oh, ooh, me. hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. I couldn't. All right, what time is it? Afternoon? I don't even know what date is. Oh, shout out. Wait, hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. Here we go. I, uh, shout out to the podcast. I just burned your couch. <laughs> Shout out to Trey Blazy, Blazy Susan <laughs> yes. with the hat. Thank you for putting that. He's right. got some cool gear coming for you too, by the way. Trey, I'm not really a big hat girl, mm. but and shout out to Domo Monster Seven for giving me this. Mm. Um, but I do want a rose gold plate, please. So what's the the new strain that's coming out? Are you are you guys making a strain? Yeah, so we've been working with a Winter Circle Genetics, who's a multi-state. Uh, they're growing uh, social equity brand. They're actually in California right now, but I know they got some really cool stuff coming. <laughs> they work with a lot of cool people. We've been partnering with them on a couple projects, and they've been talking with Sunny for a really long time about working on a strain. Sunny's idea originally was to have a strain, but we really wanted to build a brand first. Okay. So, like, since working with him, he's definitely got more street cred, and he already had he had that cred, right? Digital venture partners as a whole. What are you and your partners? What is the end goal right now? We're working towards mm -hmm. social justice, cannabis, stigma, all that. But in your mind, what is the end goal? It's honesty, it's authenticity. And so that means so many things, right? It's the stories that you're telling and the stories end up becoming the truth. Like there's, we, we live in the digital age now. We can go and see, it was very easy, you know, even like 10, 15, never going back to like the 60s to hide the shit that happened. And now we know like legally what was happened, everything that happened. So like where I kind of envision us going is just being at the highest level of authenticity and like that's no matter what we're doing, as long as I'm doing that and like sticking true to like what I know and like people that I trust and 
you know, what the market's telling you too. There's always going to be the one that dictates it. When you can go and tie that to just those two things, you, you'll, I think that's what's going to make us successful. How does the black community know that they can get involved and learn more about the cannabis industry and, and, and open up their own things in the cannabis industry? Like, how do they go about doing that? Are you putting anything out for them to be able to kind of get into and yeah oh for sure so anything we're going to do it's going to be tied back to what's happening so you always have to put my andrew says it like the medicine and the candy like you want to put stuff in there that makes the story attractive but at the same time you want to tell the real story and like you can't really talk about cannabis and weed not about talk talking about cannabis in the in the racism and like even now what's happening like as these companies are growing i know there's i'm seeing shifts i'm seeing a huge shift but it's slowly coming still and there's going to be a lot of stuff that needs to be done right the more act is like a step in the right direction but even in the at the last second there was a provision snuck in there that disallowed people who had been charged for felonies to actually work within the cannabis industry so if you had been busted for a felony weed charge and you got prosecuted for that and that was on your record <laughs> allegedly <laughs> then you would you know then what, what would what would happen is you couldn't be able to work in cannabis legally if it was federally legalized which is what the more act is going to do okay mr rapaport thank you so much for being on the show i appreciate everything i learned so much today who are we shouting out before before we end i know there's a lot oh, of people man. well if we miss you we're sorry Man, I just, uh, the community, like, because I, I would literally be dropping names all night from whether it's like culture community, music, entertainment, or the cannabis community, or the plant medicine community. I'm just like really blessed to know a lot of great people. And they're like, I'm a, you're a sum of your whole, right? So, like, the people around me have really empowered me and like helped drive me to new places. And I'm like, our whole network is built on doing things, doing good things with other people who are also doing good things. All right, guys. Until next time, peace. Thank <laughs> you.